This tutorial will show you how to make a rib of a gossamer condor by tracing a drawing. So go to Start, Shape, Sketch Tracer. Let's get to the Sketch Tracer workbench. And get to the right view so we can import a picture here. Click this button and select the drawing you would like to import. Now you want to adjust these scales to get the image you want out of the picture. So here we will do this and you can set a dimension. So we know the length is 14 and a half inches so this will scale the image properly. Now this will cut the image so as not to leave us with a bunch of noise outside of the image we want. So there is that image. And you'll see it shows up under the applications in the tree. It's painting one. So now we'll insert a new part. Right click, or click on the product, insert new part, change it to the canard rib, change both the instance name and part number, click OK. And we will open that in a new window so that we can import the coordinates for the airfoil. To do that, go to the spreadsheet, um, which is comes with Katia. It will be at that C address on the C drive. GSD point spline, and this will load a Excel sheet with a uh, a macro in it. If you want to copy your coordinates under the start loft and start curve items in the Excel sheet, um, x coordinate goes in the first column y coordinate in the second, z in the third. Um, right now we have x and z, we'll move that in a second, but first we want to make a scale adjustment to change it from fractions of the chord um, to inches, or I guess millimeters we'll do right now, which is the 25.4 you saw in the multiplication. So we'll multiply those, copy and paste the values here, now we can delete that. All right, now we'll move the Z coordinate over to the Z column and put in zeros for the Y coordinates. And adjust the decimal showing. We'll want to sort the coordinates so that when we import the points in Katia, we can make a spline that smoothly goes around the airfoil instead of working from front to back and then going back to the front to work back to work front to back on the bottom. It will go around the airfoil in 360 degrees. So we'll need to move that macro indicator to the last line, the end curve, end loft, end delete any empty rows. Go to the developer tab, which you may need to add going through the options in Excel. Click on the main and then we'll do two to get that to run. Um, your cursor will have to be in A1 to start that macro. So now since we opened the part in a new in a new window, which you must do, you'll get a new geometrical set in Katia. And we'll go back to the original window so that we can see the drawing too. In this case, our, our rib is, is backward from our drawing, but so we'll reflect it over the YZ plane using the symmetry button. Click on the spline, reflect it over YZ. Click OK. 
Now control shift and to select all the points in the spline for the old one and then you can hide those leaving just the new one and we'll move the new spline into a new geometrical set to its own geometrical set and change the color so it stands out over the drawing and bring back the drawing by showing the painting That. We need to move the spline into the, the same geometrical set that we just moved the symmetry, and we'll hide the symmetry. Change that to red so it stands out again. I'll right, do green and make the line a little thicker. Pink shows up better than the green. Now we'll click on the spline and offset. So we'll get a, a new inside curve, which we can set to be 3 eighths of an inch inside the other curve as defined by the drawing dimensions. And now we will create lines to represent the structure inside the rib. Just, so just click line and we'll put it in approximately the same location as it appears on the drawing. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now what you want to avoid are automatically constraining any of these lines. So to do that, um, you press uh, shift, control, when creating the line. That'll create it from snapping to places and creating automatic horizontal and vertical constraints and the like so that we can move these lines as we wish later. Now I'll go ahead and constrain these segments of the rib to be the right dimension. Offsetting them a distance will automatically make them parallel. But here you can see you can do parallelism or distance. So we will set that to match the drawing and go ahead and do the same. Now instead of typing in the dimension, since these are all the same, you could find the same the constraint for a previous uh, distance between lines in the tree and set it equal to that dimension. So you would only have to change one of the dimensions and they would all adjust accordingly when you updated. Go ahead and do some of the other features inside the rib. Now right now we are essentially free-forming it to the drawing but really you would want to use a lot more constraints to get everything in the exact position that it appears in the drawing when we have the dimensions clearly shown. 
Now using this multi-segment line, you get a new segment every time you click. So you can continue going around the shape like this, which is more convenient than adding lines separately. You can also get curves doing this. Um, if you click, hold, and drag after you make a point, you will get a curve. But we don't need any for this particular shape. Something else you could have done for this corner, for example, you could have created a chamfer instead of making the lines as we did at the angles. Um, so you can make it a rectangle at the top and chamfer the corners at a certain angle, 45 degrees here, instead of creating an original shape such as this. Go ahead and put some angle constraints on, 45 degrees. And now to add the hole, press the circle, align the center of the circle about with where it appears on the drawing, click, and drag out to the appropriate radius. We'll dimension that accordingly. Adding the second hole at the top of this piece. Again, going off the drawing more than any dimension there. Click that button to hide from the dimensions. Or the constraints, rather. Now we'll go ahead and trim, which is the eraser button and trim away all the pieces of these lines that we created that do not exist as actual edges in, in the real part if it were constructed. You can uh, double click the eraser button to trim multiple pieces without having to click the eraser button every time. Um, and then we'll just hide the pieces that are outside or delete them. Once you break the, the pieces at the intersections. We'll go ahead and make these segments construction objects or hide them. It'll leave the dash line behind since it was trimmed and broken at those points. So we made this rib all one part here. It could very well be multiple parts and then you would have more edges. You wouldn't trim it as we just did. So once we um, exit that, we'll press the pad button to give this a thickness. And we want to select mirrored extent, and then we'll just do half the thickness. So that way it'll, it is symmetrical about the XZ plane, and we will apply the wood material.